everyone. Welcome back. Another edition of the post-game overreaction show, the POS, presented by UJSports.com. I'm your host, Paul Meharry, joined alongside Dane Young. Hopefully, you'll join us as well. The link is in the description. You can join into a virtual waiting room behind the scenes, and uh, we'll get you onto the screen with us. Dane, it was a pretty uh, fun game to watch. I didn't think we'd see Carson Beck in there as, as long as we did. A lot to touch on. Uh, before we do that, though, if you're watching, go ahead and put it into the comment section where you're watching from. We'd love to know where you're watching from. Put it up onto the screen. And if you have any questions, let us know that as well. Uh, we're always willing to answer those, and it helps the show move by when it's not just Dane and I trying to uh, dribble thoughts out of our uh, thick, thick skulls. So, uh, Dane, overall, it was it was actually a fun game to watch. It was probably the more uh, most fun G-Day I've had watching in, in quite some time. I think the ending really helped that because for a while I had told I was texting some people and saying, man, I know there are families that drove three or four hours to Athens for this just because why not? It's a beautiful day. Go to Athens, enjoy Sanford Stadium. Um, but I, first part of that game was, was fine. The whole middle section of it really felt like there wasn't much going on to me. There's a lot of punning, a lot of, lot of yes. uh, back and forth punning. I, I can tell you with certainty that Anthony Evans is going to be the punt returner. He, it seemed <laughs> like he uh, got 12 or 13. Well, I can tell you how many he had. Uh, it, was, it was quite a lot. But the end of the game was exciting, and you know the Dominic Lovett catch and destroying the fence between the now yes. regrowing baby hedges. I mean, that's that's an iconic spring game moment if there is one. Yeah, uh, Joshua Heyman says, "How in the hell do you not win your own spring game?" Hashtag Fire Bobo. Probably the dog vent within the next ten minutes. Yeah, uh, it was interesting, right? Because right there at the end, it seemed like Kirby. You know, for whatever reason, wanted to uh, to keep it going, right? He wanted to see his quarterbacks get those two minute drills and and continue to kind of press forward, and and that's a a good thing to see. A lot of a lot of guys caught passes in this game. Uh, Twenty. Well, I did wonder for a moment though, Paul, would they do an overtime period or two just to get the practice of that? I thought right. for a second that would be something Kirby. Well, I thought I, you know I don't know um, the regulations on that. Are you allowed to to have overtime, or the NCAA going to kind of get on to you? What you know? What's who, the thoughts? Who on dictates that? that? Yeah, like, that's what I'm at. Yeah, NCA has policy on that. I don't know. Maybe you can't have overtime in that situation. Uh, maybe this guy here, the professor, can uh, answer this for us. What's up, Doc? <laughs> I haven't heard that in a long time, actually. Well, yeah, well, uh, Looney Tunes reference. Uh, it was, it was nothing much, really. That was, I guess, exciting. It was the end. It could they have had overtime if they wanted to? That's where we're at in the discussion. Yeah, could they have, or the NCAA is like, nah, you, you don't get that. I mean, it's a practice, right? Is there a limit think, on practice time? They do what they want to. Yeah, I don't know. It's I fun. would think you could do. I mean, Lane Kiffin's having the hot dog eating contest, right, or something like that, or yeah. you know, so <laughs> you could I don't do know, whatever yeah. you want. I guess, right? I, I thought for a second when Kirby was motioning, I didn't know he was pointing to go to the locker room. I thought he was like motioning the offense to come down to like the twenty yard line right there at the end and and see what could happen. He did say though that because you know they have the. I think they have what steak and lobster for the winner and then beans and, and hot dogs for the loser. Uh, he did say everybody gets the reward this, this year since they tied. So I think maybe, maybe they got a good deal on steaks is why yeah. they decided, you know, to not have <laughs> uh, this, this thing in, in, in the non tie. Cause they would have had less over steak. Well, it's also, and you, know, you think about it from the coach's perspective, they're also inherently risk averse in certain things, especially when it comes to practice. And if you put it in a situation right there where you go for two, like everybody on the field is frothing at the mouth and going full go. And that's like, okay, I don't want to get someone hurt on the last play of the, of the scrimmage. Right. Let's just end it right here. But no, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. I think it was a fun game. Let's bring in, uh, we've got Eddie from Ackworth. Eddie's in his backyard, brick columns, beautiful house, beautiful house. Thank you. Appreciate that. I wouldn't like to swim, but the pool's 60 degrees, a little chilly. So uh, you don't have the heated uh, elements in there. The heater's broken, Paul. So, um, mm. yeah. Dang. It's much like our, our YouTube comments right now feels broken. We've only gotten one. You guys need to step oh. it up and, uh, and talk to us in the YouTube comments. Eddie, from a fan's perspective, uh, do you enjoy the game? Well, yeah. I mean, I think Dane said at the start, this is one of the most entertaining G day games I've ever watched. Usually by the, Middle of the third quarter, you're oh, okay. Sorry, Paul said it. I apologize. Sorry, yeah. host. You know, yeah, 
<clears throat> anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, by the third quarter, you're like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? And you're having to look down. And it, that was, there was none of that. Kirby kept the main guys out there for the entire game and let them compete. And um, I, this is the overreaction show, so I'll start with this. Um, I love you, Lawson Lucky. That little slant he caught in the first half was beautiful. But if that's 19, he houses that. We missed Brock Ooh. Bowers already. So, Ooh, okay. There's not okay. a Brock Bowers in this. No, team. I know. I, I know. Brock I'm just pointing that out. You know, so. I, I may or may not have texted Dane that Urosic is going to get a lot of time. I think, yeah. at least from a when they're in like defined passing situations, like when they go two receivers on each side and one of those players is a tight end, I could see that being Urosic a lot. Yeah, but uh, the two maybe. things, the two things, Paul, we talked about last week that I saw wanted to see was Dom be dominant. We absolutely saw that. That guy yeah. is a stud. And the second was I want to see Colby Young, and you said that as well. I want to see how he steps up. He looks the part to me, man. He, I keep saying it. I think it's the next Marcus Rosemey Jack Saint is right there. That's Colby Young. Evan Grimes says he called that Sokovi touchdown on the pregame show, which he did. I think uh, Jed May also did, didn't he, Dane? I feel like he did. Sure, we'll go yeah. with that. I think yeah. he did. <laughs> Kevin Boyd says CJ Allen is him. He is man. That, Brent, I've got a question for you here. Okay, you you seem to have oh man, four five inside backers. How do you keep them all happy? Rotate them. I, I think I think that's not a be position a... that's that Kirby has really rotated in years past. He's found his two guys and those guys. Well, but he's <laughs> it's usually three. It, it's True. usually three and you see one that's more sort of run down dominant ones more throw you know defined passing down player but i think it's when you so you got raylan wilson cj allen munden and then the young guys and i, I just i think you're going to rotate them you're going to see and, and williams looks the part mm. physically like mm. really, Physically stands out. Look, and really, all those guys that were the, the highest rated recruits that were defensive players, five star guys that they actually pointed out on the broadcast, all of them physically looked apart. I now, mean, one of the first plays of the game was a Troy Bowles would have been sacked in yeah, regular Bowles, football. Yeah, and yeah. like now it's just about mentally who stands out mentally because that that's what, it's, especially at that position, at that position group, it's all in. That's why CJ Allen played a lot last year. Why Nicobe played early is is here when the physical part is already, is already there. So it's who stands out mentally. Uh, Aaron Murray made a comment on the broadcast. Michael Williams looks like Jadavian Clowney. Mm -hmm. is, is he is he there yet? I don't know that he said that he looked like Jadavian Clowney, and I'm not here like standing up for Aaron Murray because he said some weird things on here that. Like he said Rod Robinson was the fastest running back on the team, and that's just not true. Yeah, it's uh, it's tough. It's spring game. It's spring game yeah. for everybody. Spring game for everybody. Garrett Wilson might be the best center ever. Yeah, ever in <laughs> but, but he, said, he said he looks like he looks like. I, I think what he meant because it was the play where Michael threw Rod Rob. Like, yes, kind of so down after the play or a first down. I, I think what he meant was Jadavian Clowney did that to me. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Okay. He also That's called right. Kobe Young a home run, and Kirby quickly corrected yeah, him. Kirby, says, Kirby Slow down there, young man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Evan Grimes says, wish I could have bet that. Yeah, didn't we say that would be like the most degenerate thing in the world you could do, Evan? I guess you would have won some money. Um, Joshua Hammond says, I'm only here to see Dane, quote, stand on business. Hasn't done that since the Orange Bowl POS. Hey, we're, we're, still, in, we're still in rare form in the springtime here. I don't we're even not, know what that means. I don't either. Yeah, what does that mean? Stand on business. You remember? You don't remember uh, the. We'll have to go back and watch it. It was pretty funny. Uh, anything to be concerned? I've got Jason, Butt, and Andy waiting here in the background, so I'll kind of try to rotate you guys in. Anything to be concerned about, Brent? Uh, watching this game, I don't know that concern is the right word for anything. I do think QB two is still. Uh, I mean, he's he is QB two in in Gunner Stockton, but I think what you see with him and it's just, you have one offense for Beck and then you have a lot, a lot of variations of that offense. If Gunner has to play any significant amount, you're going to have to bring the QB run game in. You're going to have to bring more uh, play action, get the QB moving type things. in. he's just, I, I, it was kind of meh for me there. Okay. Any uh, any concerns there, uh, EFA? 
Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm with Brent. I don't really see any concerns. I'll just give you um, – well, I don't know. I guess you could flip this around to be a concern on the offense, but I love the tip balls, you know, that the, the defensive line got today. That That is the worst play when you're on offense to watch your team throw and tip ball and the play's over. That just drives everybody crazy, and they did that a bunch of times. Now, credit the defense for that, but on the other side of the ball, that ain't good for Carson Beck and the and, – the offensive line, right? That they gotta they gotta cut down on those. But uh, one more That's thing, the paradox guys. of spring game assessment. Yeah, study. It's yeah. Like, you're right. Okay, if you say one thing's good, that means that whatever it was bad on the other side, not as yeah. good. Right. right. But they don't really showcase the running game much in G Day game. But what little I saw today, I'm really excited about this run game. I think it can be really, really good. And we're not we're not even discussing what Branson Robinson could or could not be in the fall. So I loved what I saw out of the backs today. Well, I love what I see in your backyard, Eddie. And I wish I could have you on longer. Maybe call, come back a little bit later once sure. uh, yep. once everybody clears out. So good, good to see you guys. Get Who Eddie was the one guy for you, Paul? Who was the one player that you're like, okay. Man, probably Michael. Like, it was it was a different. He looked different today. And Curry mentioned it. He didn't have spring last year. You know, mm-hmm. and he, I don't know. He, I text uh, Eddie and Andy. I said I think he's a ten sack guy this year. Like, I really do. I, I think that he has that in him. The one concern for me though, and I also texted Eddie and, and Andy this: Are the corners championship caliber right now? And that's that's probably the the scarier thing for me. I don't know if, if Everett and and Humphrey are there yet. Now, if your defensive line can step up, right. And it doesn't put as much pressure on them. And we're seeing a very, we're we're seeing it right now where there's really no defensive line pressure getting to the quarterback. I mean, yeah, they could go touch him or whatever, but there's not, it's, it's not the same as a real game. Uh, That's my only concern on this whole entire team. And and because of the dynamic last year, you had a dominant secondary, right? Thus, what what pass rush kind of limitations that you had or that you didn't get were covered up by great secondary play. Those work right. hand in hand. And if the I think the talent is there to have a great pass rush. I think it's very young. But it's all it's also very young. And it's also is it going to play on early downs? Like right. are you going to see Damon Wilson and Mike Hill on the field on early downs, Jalen Walker on early downs, or versus just those guys, you've seen those guys on third downs like you saw for the most part last year. If you don't get that pressure, then it amplifies what you're talking about from a secondary standpoint. But you've got star – like, the, the, it's not a talent issue. It's a right. experience KJ playing. Hype. Like, sure. he's different. Like, Yeah. I was – my one, my one guy, just – and because it speaks to what you're talking about with the pass rush, the one guy for me – was a kid who won't be 18 until November. And that's JJA, Joseph, however you say his last Jonah, name. JJA. Jonah, uh, John A. Yeah, I think I'm I gonna, think JJA is going to be the, the the name there. But just watching him move on the interior as a pass rusher, that's a position of great need where, hey, can I play this guy on early downs and get some level of pass rush on play action type plays? And given the fact that the kid, you know, he's going to, I think, exponentially be better physically just with each passing month because of the age factor. He's going, I think he's going to be one. He's one to me that stood out physically combined with all the factors, the youth part. Love to see it. And uh, Brent Rollins and Dane will be doing a special show tomorrow night after our show. Hopefully, I'm just asking you now, you guys can come into our show a little early bleed, and we'll bleed over and, uh, because we, we talk draft too, you know, we, we do that as well. Uh, yes. N- nowhere near as, as talented, but we, we try. So we have both. I, I disagree. I disagree. Ah, well, I don't see any, see much. I mean, difference we're going to have some JJ McCarthy takes. That's what's going to ah, happen. We're not going to. Well, I, th- I think, I think this week is, is we might do some FDL uh, on the spring game. Nice. I like it. That's what I was asking Dane earlier. I want to see. I wasn't idea. sure because I never, like, there's not schemes to show off here. So this it's, is, it's, it's going to be player. Do, it's it's yeah. got to be player driven i'll tell you you, so joe so i would love to see kj bolden broke down a little bit because he had a couple plays the first couple where he got beat and then he made his way back so i'd like and just you know you guys do you i'm i'm not the guy here to tell you what to do but i would like to see kj bolden i think other people would too 
So yeah. maybe we we see him. There's a lot of stuff you could do with quarterbacks. I mean, Carson Beck had some phenomenal throws. He also had yeah, some but we see we see quarterbacks all the time. I want to see so. I want to see that young that five star kid from Buford. I want to see what 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 the doc says and what he sees with his eyes. I want to see that. I do have one question for you, Paul. Yeah. Do you think Carson Beck still looks uncomfortable throwing outside of the pocket? Oh, he he looked a little uncomfortable today. Yeah. Um. It it. But at the same time, he made some incredible throws, like that oh, throw on the last drive. Uh, oh yeah, that, uh, down the, side, the left side. Line. Was it to Ra Ra? Yes. Yeah. yes. That was that was uh, NFL level throw right there. Um, Consistently from the pocket, he's the best in structure pocket passer, and maybe also, in college football that we've seen in a while. This is the first game that he had. Well, like the first true game that we've seen with Jerry Wilson. So him and Jerry Wilson still trying to get on the same page. Uh, you know, I, I think he's fine, man. I think he's going to be. Oh, there's nothing to look. This is a spring yeah. game. Like, if, if anything, well, I, I, I text. Why I text would the Carson Beck be super invested in this? Well, I text a buddy of mine. I was like, QB controversy? Question mark. Laugh out loud. Like, you no. know, I know, I know, right? I know. But it was, it was just. It's funny because I'm sure somebody on Dogman after he threw the first pick was like, man, I don't know, you know. And and that he, that gap is large. To yeah. Me. But so. I also think, Brent, I also think if Gunner had to step up, I think he could lead this offense, though. Yeah, I just it have to look different. The, yeah. It have to be ele- bring elements, the stronger parts of his game, you'd have to bring more so to your offense. Right. And that's that's him running and because that's the strength of his game. Well, the strength of our game here is to get on Jason Butt here and Andy Stowe. So, Doc, we appreciate it. KJ Bullard, remember, film don't lie. I'd like to see it. Just we'll see it. We'll hit it up. We'll hit it up. All right. See ya. Uh, before we get them real quick, Uncle Lou is in the building. What's up? He says, uh, hey, we better hope Ellis Robinson can play because our st- two starting corners are massive drop-offs from what we've had. And putting hope in this D-line seems like wishful thinking too. So Uncle Lou is in rare overreaction form. We'd love to see it. Uh, I was there with him, though. I said the two corners, so, uh, you know. Rob Phillips over on Facebook. Rob's a great profile picture, my friend. Hope you're doing well. Says, Michael was impressive. Love seeing the O-line play. Uh, well in run game, Dom and Ra-Ra looking good, and I'm okay with the QB run game coming in with Gunner if needed. Oh, look who it is. Miss Mary's here. She's back. Howdy, Miss Mary. Good to see you. Good to see you. And then we've got James Carraway doing his thing out there. Lord have mercy. God bless him. Jason Butt, Andy Stowe, bring them both in at the same time. What's up, What's guys? Up? Hey, How's it going? How you guys got two different versions of the Braves hat on. Uh, let's hey. just let's just flip it up and let's just make it three. There you, you know? go. Come on now. Come on, Dane. You got to get in on this. Yeah. Where is it, I don't Dane? Know if I have any Braves gear within sight. Wow. Oh man, that's not good. Uh, uh, let's let Andy go first. He's got a he's got a, a hot yeah, I got a taco a, mac. Yeah, I do. It's a guy. It's with my friend, but yeah, he's a gator. <laughs> yeah, we just broke the internet. No, um, I do. I was. I wanted to talk to. Um, I wanted to talk to Brent Rollins about that because he was talking about the defensive line. I wanted to see what his take was on the offensive line, the first offensive line unit, because the defensive line they got after him a little bit today. Like you saw Tate Ratledge, he got beat a couple of times. So I was curious what he thought about, and it, Warren Brinson got him. So I was curious as to what he thought about that. So maybe well, Dane, we can talk to him tomorrow night. They'll be yeah. they'll bleed over into our show. Make sure you ask him uh, ask him then. But but yeah, I was thought the D line looked good. Was it I thought fun it was fun to watch though. Yeah, it was real fun to watch. I mean, it was you know the middle of the game was a little boring, but I don't know. I thought the first and the the, the beginning and the end was good. So I, I enjoyed it. I would have liked to have been there. So. Who here's a good one, Jason? Before we get your thoughts. Uh, Waiting room mag over on the X machine says uh, Beck's performance in one word. That's tough. Putting you on the spot here. Clutch. Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay. It was, it, it was, it was, uh, yeah. before, I, before we get your first thoughts, Jason, uh, one word, Andy or Dane, I don't have one. So my brain interesting. Work interesting. Interesting. Okay. Clutch. Interesting. I don't know if you can do this in one word. I mean, because they both was, just did. I, Jason had a great one. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go competitive. There, go yeah, competitive. That's, that's okay. Yeah. It, to me, it was just obvious that like when he was invested, he was fantastic. And he did some things that. So fantastic. Great, but there's fantastic. But, there, but there's no reason to be like alarmed by it because he's no. a great player and he can make all the throws. So 
So you thought he just wasn't invested in parts of the game? You thought it was just kind of like, okay, it is what it I mean, is. Somebody on the dog vent said he looks like he was hungover from the night before. And I'm like, <laughs> maybe. Hey, you never Athens is, Athens is undefeated, brother. Right. Athens like, is that's undefeated. totally possible in this yeah. scenario. And who would blame him? Eddie Eddie uh, says his one word is mature. So I like that. Ooh, Joshua well, Hammond says Joshua Hammond says nails. Okay, so like tough as nails that I, but that's three words, Josh. Anyways, Jason, you've got many more words than one. What What did you see? Yeah, well, specifically with Carson Beck, I think it's uh, you know the fact that there was that pressure to 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 get something going. He obviously didn't have uh, you know the the kind of uh, performance uh, maybe we would have expected just because you know ever since Kirby got here, G Day has been a offensive or he's tried to let it be for the fans where, where points and yards are, are put up on the stat sheet and, and the defense said not today. Uh, I thought really more than anything, I thought the defense was very inspired. So if, if you yeah, were to flip it, it around with one word for the defensive performance yeah. inspired and they, I mean, y'all have already talked about Michael Williams and, and CJ Allen. I thought the CJ Allen interception was, if he adds that kind of level of coverage to his game, then this Georgia defense in the middle is going to be ridiculous. Yeah. And so uh, there was a lot that, uh, and it, you know, you're going vanilla on vanilla and, and the, the Georgia defense, just the athleticism in the front seven really made it difficult for Carson Beck. So for him to then deliver that throw to Ra Ra Thomas and then to deliver the throw to, to Dom Lovett there, uh, at the end, I, I thought was uh, was spectacular, and that's why I, I ultimately decided on clutch to 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 go with you know his performance for the day. But really, the game to me was more about the defense. Really, both sides yeah, of the ball. I thought the first and second team were lights out. How about yeah. Pope? Pope looked great today. Like he was making Pope plays. Had two chances to get well, an interception. He, he had that. He had his hand in a ball. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he. De I think he definitely would have got that interception in the end zone. Yeah, I think so. Uh, instead of them kicking that field goal, he he tried, and it was no fault of his own. But he was, you know, going to catch with both hands, and he had kind of forgotten that he had a a, a club <laughs> a on. Club, yeah. so, so it hit off the club instead. But I think he would have caught that. Um, Beyond I thought creative he looked pretty here. athletic. I thought he looked good. Like, I was impressed with him. Yeah. Beyond creative, what's up, man? He says, go dogs. Thank God, no injuries. That was one of the big things Kirby said. Now, I'm curious. Uh, Christian Miller came out. Did he come back in? Did you guys see him come back in? I don't think I did, but I, also I didn't see him come back in. Kirby yeah. said no injuries. So I'm going to trust that means it was, you know, minor. Yeah. This hurts in the moment, but it's done. Yeah, because it did look kind of rough when he was down on the field, but he went over, jogged to the sidelines. Um, ooh. Now we're getting a lot of these. Oh, we're just going to go with everybody now. Yeah, uh, DS <laughs> says uh, Trevor Etienne in one word. Um, ooh, twitchy. Mm. He, I mean, he was. He had. There was a couple plays. So uh, he had four rushes, twenty-four yards. Uh, his that long of eighteen was was like, oh man, that's that's the ETN that I'm I'm looking forward to watching. That was uh, a nice run. Cook esque. Cook esque, oh, okay. about Swift esque. Okay, he, re he reminds me more of DeAndre Swift. Okay, yeah. Okay, Dane. I'm just gonna go committee. I think it's gonna be more of a running back by committee than we initially thought. Yeah, because first running back in was Rod Rob, right? We didn't see Etienne for I don't know five or six plays. Now I don't know if that was you know from from his uh, debacle uh, over the off season or not but we'll see I assume but, I mean, there's two dudes on the way that could contribute at running back as well there's just a wealth of talent there yeah, yeah. uh kevin boyd he's always got our back he said christian miller did go back in we appreciate yep. that so uh <laughs> what is this what is this james caraway says colby young in four words now <laughs> this is this is i got a huge get in portal right there four words yeah, on the spot that's right not there. bad that's and with and that, I got I got to go because I'm going to eat. So, guys, this is great. Y'all have fun. We'll see you tomorrow night, man. man. Take care. Tell me it looks nice. Yeah. Pure red zone threat. Pure red zone threat. Okay. Ah, yeah. this is this is tough. This is tough. Uh, four words. I think Andy hit it on the head, and then you you came in right after. Um, that dude is tall. Back shoulder catching machine. I like this one from from uh, 
from FBI. Looks like AJ, like Looks like AJ Green. He does. He does, dude. He yeah. definitely does. Um, I like that one. I'll go with that one. Looks like AJ Green. Does he? Because I, yeah. I don't think so. He's got the same number, right? He looks. They look very similar. Like on he's the tall. field. So when people yeah. have the same number, they look the same. Well, no, he, he's well, when they're tall, tall but the same number. Kind of, yeah. They're they're not, sure. they're not jacked. They're kind of slender. Um, I said uh, to a buddy of mine, I said, "This is what JJ Holloman I think would have been had he was if he was able to stay at George. I think he would have been like that that target." <laughs> Let's see, Kobe I don't think J.J. Holloman looks like A.J. Green either. So, like, we're not connected here. This is me. I, Fine. I, yeah, Evan Grimes, Dan, go take a lap. Yeah, I agree. He looks like A.J. Green. <laughs> uh, Quado. Qua, Quadwo uh, says forwards check down every time. I, I don't know. Timothy says looks like Julio Jones. Whoa. Okay. Look, I like these. I like these. Uh, and then look at Kevin. He says I look good, too. No, he's talking about Andrew Paul. Uh, Andrew Paul did. He had the 25 yard run uh, Two. he only had two attempts, though, for the red team. And then he had two attempts for the black team, which he also had a 16 yard run for the black team, too. Uh, I think, like you said, Dane, this could very much be a, a committee at running back more so than what we thought kind of coming into this, where it's going to be ETNs and then the rest. Well, and we're going to learn how this rotation works too. Dell McGee tended to kind of stick with, uh, well, I guess he had a rotation at some times and, and you and you would wonder why wouldn't he stick with the hot hand? How will this change? Who makes, or I guess ultimately that decision goes through Kirby, but he tends to give his position coaches some leeway on how to handle right. those substitutions. So with this being the first time in the Kirby smart era that Dell McGee's not the running backs coach, we may see a different flow of how these running backs get in the game. Yeah, yeah that's a great reference. point. That's a great now, point. Jason. Yeah, and and I'll be interested because you know they've been able to make that committee approach where it's you know two plays in, uh, one play out, or, or you know then they come out and and this this uh, the kind of really just fast uh, movement where we're not a, a back or a back was not able to really get into uh, momentum. And as everybody knows, a lot of successful running backs. Uh, they need to have a, a series or, or two series in a row to really get going. Um, however, when you're Georgia and you have you know 8,000 running backs on your roster all at one time, uh, you know you want to get those guys carries so they stick around a little longer and 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 and, and save the wear and tear so they have professional features here. Uh, but uh, it, that, that is great. That's a, that's a great point. It will be interesting. You know, does it change? Uh, does the philosophy move or? Or um, do they they keep the the same uh, approach? You know, given that you know Kirby's ultimately uh, kind of going top down. Hey, this is what I want. Make it work. And so uh, I'll be interested to see if if that approach uh, you know shifts or, or if it doesn't. Oh, I like Rob Phillips. He said, "I've got four words after watching today. Three out uh, three of four years. Mm. I like that. It, it it looks like you know I didn't watch anybody else's spring game yet, but it looks." It looks uh, like this team might be able to. Evan Grimes with the twenty dollar dono. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, Evan. He says, uh, "You think Ellis takes a starting spot by Clemson?" No, but I think he's probably the be- one of the best two corners you have on the team. I don't know that starter matters as much because I can see them rotating one of those spots, maybe even multiple. If they, they tend oh, to like. If- they like one lockdown corner and then maybe rotate that second spot. Yeah, Paul, if uh, if if you think he's one of the two best going in, and this coaching staff thinks he's one of the two best going in, he's going to start. It's as simple as that. They 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 haven't why they haven't done why, anything why in the he... past to suggest that they want a guy to get some time to get acclimated before this coaching staff at least to get acclimated to to uh, to things. Like if they think he's one of the two best, he's starting. So then, why wasn't he on the the starting defense? Well, he's probably not one of the two best at this time. Mm. There's also a chance, but that it could that be decision, by Clemson. That's all. That decision yeah. could take care of itself, and like we haven't discussed the biggest thing that's happening now, which is this portal is about to reopen for another yeah. cycle, and Georgia will lose some players in this. And it How could many? be, it could we'll very well, out. could very well be, Dane, some politicking right there to try to keep those guys around. Yeah. yeah you see Ellis, he's on the second team right now. You guys are my starters. You get through that portal and you're like, I need, cause I need the depth, right? I need, cause if Ellis doesn't work out, you know, I need the depth. I'd be curious, uh, Evan, that's a good question. I don't think so, but I believe that he should, if that makes sense. Um, I don't, I don't think he does though. Let's bring, uh, let's bring Eddie back in real quick. There he is. 
Eddie, Jason, Ellis how Stark, are you, buddy. Good to see you. Yeah, man. Good to see you too. Doing all right yourself? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Sorry. Good. Go ahead, Paul. Hey, uh, so Evan uh, gave us some money here, so we we have to answer his question. Well, we answer his questions even if he doesn't give money, but he gave money this time, so we have to. Uh, Ellis taking a starting spot by Clemson. Yes. Okay. I think so. Hundred percent. I think it's unquestioned. Hey, I do want to point out one of my favorite plays of the game. Y'all haven't even talked about. Uh, it was that flat play where they hit Sakobi White in the flat, and he takes it down. And I had to rewatch it because I wasn't sure. But another kid laid out a humongous block. You know who it Nitro was? Tuggle. Nitro Tuggle. Nitro Tuggle. Two what kids that should be in high school right now making huge plays on that play. I love. So you that. W- you watched it twice. Was it not a block in the back? No, it was not a block in the back. Okay, I, I, look, they didn't call it. I'm just asking. Just no. playing a little devil's no. advocate there. No, yeah. don't be ridiculous. Okay, <laughs> just asking. <laughs> Fred F says Eddie from the A. Yeah, we ain't talking Atlanta. We're talking Ackworth, baby. Uh, DS says really would have liked to see Puglisi today. Yeah, yeah, but you got to see a you got to see a whole hell of a lot of Gunnar Stockton and and Carson Beck. Sure, I would have loved to have seen them too. I'm just surprised guys that let's see we got a total of four attempts from colin drake and sam bush combined four that's it the rest of them were from stockton and 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 carson beck i thought for sure when i when i opened up the pregame show i was like the one thing i need to get across to the fan is i need to tell them who colin drake and sam bush are because they're going to see a lot of them Mm -hmm. You, you didn't see them at all you saw you saw stockton and beck out there what was the reasoning behind that guys I think it's Kirby trying to keep keep everything exciting. That's really it. Nobody was getting hurt either. There was no reason to keep to take guys out. It's a close game. Why do that? Uh, you know, gotta end, get, gonna get, exactly. get Gunner the reps too. By the end, I think it's what you said earlier, Jason. It's that Beck was in a situation where he had to lead his team back in in that. Mm-hmm. And that's so, it. Yeah, that that can be hard to simulate in practice and especially in the stadium. And so when you have that there, that is going to be something that Carson Beck's more invested in in that moment because uh, you just feel the adrenaline and the energy. And you saw his best throws of the day happen on that drive. Well, Kirby think- thrives on putting his players in these competitive situations yeah. too. Yeah, that's why, the, that's, where- why the, that's why the last three minutes of the game took 30 minutes because he was like, <laughs> right. yeah, we're, not, we're not leaving, boys. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're giving the ball back to Gunner to let him try to do something with it. Oh, that's, that's why I thought there might be an overtime. Yeah, yeah give, it, give it to Carson. Actually. Yeah. Give it to well, Carson. He, I think it comes down to I think it comes down to reps too. Kirby's like, what are these other two guys that are never going to see the field? What do we need reps on? Puglisi would have gotten those reps if he wasn't hurt, and he's going to get a fourth quarterback probably next week. He may have seen some reps if he was on the team, right? But Gunner, Gunner, and Carson need all the reps they can get, and they got them, and I loved it. It's an odd situation if they pull a quarterback from the portal because you're pulling one to say you're going to be a depth piece here. So just come be part of Georgia and be a practice squad. Person. But he said he's going to do it, Dane, right? Oh, no, I no, mean, no. I agree. I just, it's yeah. a hard pitch to make when yeah. Juju Lewis is the target that they're hoping to get in for the next class. And then frankly, I think they're probably going for another portal quarterback, potentially a starter for next season. After well, I, I asked Paul Whoa. this on Sunday, I'll ask you and Dane, Jason, is Kirby going after a quarterback to back up Carson, or is he going for a quarterback to back up Gunner in the portal? Uh, Carson. Yeah. And Carson? to just be a death piece. I, I, yeah, no, you don't bring in a guy and say, by the way, you're going to back up Gunner next year too. You, no, you know, you're I'm not, not going to say that, Jason, but I mean in his mind. because I, I'm saying – No, no, no. Uh, in, in his mind, he's going – it's all on the table. I think when it comes to next year's quarterback competition, it's wide open. Uh, he's not thinking, okay, I've got Gunner the year after. It's I've got Carson right now, and then we'll see what happens with what we have uh, going into twenty. Yeah, but I, I don't think that's I don't think that's just unique to Georgia, though. I think that's every major program across college football. It is right now because of the portal. It's yeah. a, it's I think a that's why this thing. is going to be two different players. One, I don't think there's going to be a quarterback the caliber of starting at Georgia that Kirby's going to want in this upcoming portal cycle. No. So I think they're going to bring in a person that's an emergency quarterback, likely behind Gunner, because they're not going to know Georgia's system. They're going to have, what, four months here uh, before that happens. And then you probably, after next season, get into a situation, or after the upcoming season, where you can have a better pick of the litter yeah. in that yeah. first portal cycle. 
But that's again, that's that's mm-hmm. also like I said, it's not unique to Georgia. I think I think that's every year. You see, you saw Ohio State. They said screw it. They kicked their starting quarterback off the team and went and got another one to try to win now. You know, so I think you're going to see that every year. And nothing is handed down anymore uh, in college football. There's no waiting around and being Joe Cox. You know, there's there's none of that. The, there's no seniority. There's and it's unfortunate because. It also means like there's no loyalty, but there's also no loyalty to the coaches to keep their jobs. So they, they have to keep their jobs. You know, it's a little different now with with the way things are. So that's that's what we see. Was the kickoff something new? I don't recall them doing on G Day games. Actually, I mean, they, they didn't really hit full speed, but they came out and ran from the end zone out. Whereas I think in times past, haven't they done a fair catch or not even allowed? I think them they, to did they did last year. They did last year. They've yeah. done it before where they've done yeah. this thing where they don't really? actually catch the ball, but they, yeah. they have the ball ready and they kick it. And then when the ball clears, they run, mm-hmm. they just get tagged. They've done that before. Um, I, I can't recall last year if they didn't do that though. I think they like practicing the kickoff portion. I mean, one, right. just for lining people up, but then yeah. two, you just don't get a ton of kickoffs in the stadium and you want multiple people to have experience in that. Uh, James makes a good point. He says, think uh, it was Kirby wanting to see what type of QB he may need in the portal, number three or someone to compete for number two. So maybe that's what, what he was looking for. Be curious to see. Uh, I mean, you're, yes, you're Georgia, right? But, uh, you know, to come in and say, hey, you're battling for two, you might be third, that's a tough sell when you could probably go start, you know, at a smaller school uh, with, with that. Uh, let's see here. All those decisions just have ramifications, though. So if you brought in someone and they took some of yeah. Gunner's reps, you may be telling Gunner get in the portal in the next go around, yep. and then you're having to backfill that spot. There was one guy that uh, we kept seeing for that black team uh, that I, I kept having to look up his number, and I even said it before the show uh, as a guy to look at. Michael Jackson, five mm-hmm. catches, 42 yards. Looked really good. He had the one uh, on the sideline there. I think it says it went for 27 yards. Looked good to me. Uh, Jalen Riddell, I mentioned him prior to the show. Five catches, 23 yards for the black team. Anthony Evans, he's 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 good. I think uh, Arian Smith needs to watch out because they, they pretty much do the same thing. They do, what do you mean watch out? He's coming. Anthony Evans is he, coming. He's already here. Yeah, he's what I'm saying. He's going to, I get that. I, I know I what you mean, Paul. I'm saying that, that Anthony Evans is, is, is he's got that spot. That's not, is Aaron this a, is this a science riddle from the SAT? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's no, everybody's hyping up Arian Smith this year. No, I mean, look, God bless, team. God bless Arian Smith. But I mean, Anthony Evans is that guy. As you, as That's you most, said with, what's his name? As you said with that Kentucky quarterback, uh, who's uh, flaming out with the Titans. Will uh, Evans. Uh, yeah, no, Anthony Evans is that guy. Jason, that was the most like Southern bless your heart style dig yes, I've ever heard. Yes, it was. Well done. I, I, li- I like I like him. I think he's a good player. But a- Anthony Evans does that role. He's going to do that role so much better. Yeah, I think he he Anthony Evans has a chance to be uh, one of college footballs in the next two years. One of college footballs premier elite receivers. Wow. That's what I was trying to say without being kind of blunt about it. But I appreciate you being blunt about it. I mean, That's come on, like, don't, don't beat it, you know, don't beat around the bush with it. I mean, let's call it what it is, you know. Yeah, he's he's gonna be that guy. Uh, he's he's really good. And, and you know, you, who you haven't even mentioned who was heavy in the first quarter and had a touchdown if that's reviewed, Dylan Bell. I mean, oh, yeah. he just looks like an animal out there. He's so I good. Dylan I think Bell's- his toe was in. I think on Saturday that's reviews and that's a touchdown. He's great. He's target number one to me. Oh, I mean, yeah. him and Lovett working off of each other, but they Dylan's they made special. a uh, Aaron Murray made a great point about like how do you replace the type of plays that Brock Bauer did, the jet sweeps, the the screens and the stuff like that. You can do that with Dylan Bell. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's who you can replace those type of plays with is Dylan Bell. He's just if there was another guy that was literally cloned from Debo Samuel in college, it's Dylan Bell. They both do the same exact thing. Because there's a chance he's George's best running back too. He just plays receiver. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dylan Bell is a workhorse. Evan says, uh, James Dylan Bell is a designated circus catch guy. Yeah. We, we didn't see a ton of him. You're right, Eddie. Uh, we, we saw two catches for 22 yards after the first quarter. We didn't see a ton, right? but yeah, you're, I think you're right. That's a touchdown on, on Saturdays in the fall. So it's, uh, Ooh, Rob's putting his first uh, transfer prediction out there. He says prediction Arian in the portal to Tuscaloosa. Oh, please don't. That, that would, 
that would that would hurt because Kalen DeBoer could could probably use him uh, in in that weird offense that he runs and get him some nice yards. Well, he had another drop today. That's kind of been his nemesis, right? I mean, you say that, Paul, but gosh, he, I mean, he hasn't gotten it going here. No, he and, hasn't. And, and and this offense has been. I mean, look what look at the catch he had at, in the Peach Bowl uh, two years ago. There should have been a lot more of that, mm-hmm. and it just hasn't happened. Uh, you know, uh, it'd be great if he sticks around Georgia just for the depth purposes. But um, you know, if he does transfer, I, I don't know what his options will be in terms of. It, I, I'd be shocked if if Alabama were to take him and could put him to use like that, like you said. But hey, anything's possible, I guess. Timothy Rumley's saying uh, Ant Man 2.0. Is Timmy, man, that's my dude, man. Me and him went to high school together. What's yeah? up, Timmy? Yeah, man. Hey, Timmy's a good you dude. Need to tell- Look, I love it. I, I love. It. Tell Timmy to slow down a little bit, though. Ant Man 2.0 for Anthony. Hey, he's Edmonds. allowed to have his opinion. He can that's, do what he wants. Let him, right. let him slow down a little bit. Slow no, down. you slow I like down, it. Paul. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Are we thinking that Anthony Edwards is the first man to ever be named Ant Man? No, but like I'm saying, like is he on Anthony Edwards' level yet? He might be. He could be. Season. Look, I mean, look, college t- version is about the same. Honestly. I mean, <laughs> look, Timmy, Timmy could be right by the end of the year. That could be a bold take. We might look back on it and be like, "Damn, that was that was that was smart." No, nah, Timmy knows his stuff. He played receiver at my high school. He's good. Yeah, Goat Dog yeah. says, "Dang, I'm late." You're never late, Goat Dog. You're here, brother. You're here. I mean, overall, I do think we need to just acknowledge like Georgia passes the eye test and everything. And oh, yeah. playoff era. Georgia's going to be a playoff team. It needs some injury luck to make it an easier path once we get there. But it's going to be a really fun season for Georgia. That roster is freaking loaded. Yeah. Yeah. Like the the overall, right? You, you kind of look at it from a 300 feet view, if you will. This team is really, really good. Uh, and how many how many players receivers. did we not see today that are going to be here in the fall? I mean, incoming front. Now, not that they're all going to be impactful, but there's a lot of talent coming in in the fall, right? I mean, you mentioned one, Dane, Nate Frazier. Let's not just discount him, right? He's supposed to be this all-world running back, but there's other guys, right, that are coming in. I mean, Urosic's you got- coming in in the summer mm-hmm. as a transfer tight end. That's Is that play. how you say the last name? Urosic? Uros- ben Urosic. Okay, yeah. I've been saying Urosic, and I, I'm glad you I'm glad you. I think that's right. the Arkansas Athletic Director. Close to it, aren't they the yeah. same? Aren't they spelled the same way? I don't know. So what is it again? So I, I, I'll ask John Calipari, and I'll, I'll let you know. Urosic, then Urosic, Urosic. Okay, all right, there you go. But the, look, the biggest story: which of these guys that played in G Day aren't going to be on this team in two yeah. weeks? That's the yeah. biggest storyline. When's the portal open back up on uh, the Monday, right? Fifteen Tuesday, right? Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Sketch? No. All right, so so I think the money folks are Monday. doing their thing right now. Nobody's with the sketch reference. Nope. Thank you, brother. Nope. All right, bunch of olds here with me tonight, folks. Uh, twenty to twenty, the score was today. Good thing it wasn't the year twenty twenty. We had fans in the stadium uh, for this one. There he is. What's up, brother? Uh, <laughs> Bowens, five uh, carries, twenty two yards. Didn't see it like. Nothing stood out for me with him, but he's a big guy. He's a big running back. Again, another guy that should be in the senior year of high school out there showing off. Uh, anybody besides anybody that we've mentioned so far stood out to you guys? I'll just mm-hmm. mention when they put up Roderick Robinson at six foot 240. And that, if you do the BMI or think in your head, he's a fat ass. I bet there's two percent body fat on that guy that's that's 240 pounds of muscle he's like a you, fire hydrant i mean that's do you ridiculous. do you know the bmi calculator like in your head like that not in my head but if you think about a six foot guy that weighs 240 pounds you think fat ass that's that's a short fat he's not guy. wrong man the bmi is yeah. outdated we could go on and on about it that. is it is we're not going to go down that road but the point is paul <laughs> he's short and stacked with muscle uh, unlike you I'll give you two names, Paul. Jalen Walker, I think we haven't mentioned him, and I think he's going to have a fantastic season. Yeah. The other, and I don't know that he's going to play a lot, but he was just everywhere at G-Day. I thought Dan Jackson looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah he was mm. everywhere. You're right. He, yeah, every time, uh, yes, every time he was out there, he was he was around the ball. Had the most tackle. Well, Raylan Wilson had eight tackles for solo. 
Uh, Dan Jackson had seven tackles, seven solos. So he had the most solo tackles of anybody uh, in the game. I can just see it being helpful to a KJ Bolden that Dan Jackson, who's been here for uh, multiple presidencies, it seems like that he's out there just to kind of guide this and and help. Actually, more talented. There's no doubt with that. And there are some packages they're on the field at the same time. Yeah, I think Dana. I think you made a joke, but I think he might be entering. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he has been here for for the last two presidencies. Yeah, Yeah. nineteen was Jackson's first season, right? Then yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he'll get to experience another election. Not to take this political, but yeah, he'll have he'll have three uh, 45, 46, and potentially 47 if it changes uh, for Dan Jackson. So congrats to him, man. I guess it depends how long the playoff lasts and if it goes to right. the inauguration, yeah. right? Right, yeah. yeah. He might get to see, yeah. That's, uh, you know, that's saying something. that You've been you've been around a while uh, if, if you're able to, to do that. Uh, one guy that hasn't been around in a while, which we talked about, uh, C.J. Allen, I mean. Yeah, different dude's different. They're like when they let JDJ walk, um, I, I was a little like, man, I don't know. I like, I like his production on the field. There's no, there's no comparison between him and CJ Allen. There's none. This is not a hot take, but here, here's just a prediction Glenn Schumann's not with Georgia next season. Yeah, I don't think so. This inside linebacker crew is going to play so well, and he's recruited so well. He's got to be next up. Yeah, he's he's been, but he's he's smart though. He's waiting for like Dan did. He's waiting for a big prime time. What is it? It's Power Four now, not Power Five. Waiting for a big Power Four school to to open up next year. He's going to be the hot. He's going to be the hot name. Which explains why you have you've they've had a co defensive coordinator for all this time. Yeah, yeah. You know, T. Rob steps in as the guy. But yeah, I, I agree with you, Dan. Yeah, the one other thing that impressed me, guys, is the open field tackling on a G-Day mm-hmm. game. You know, they, they just look sharp tackling in the open field. I was really impressed with that. Howard Eubanks says Dan Jackson will make a tremendous defensive backs coach. Yeah, he will. We might be hearing a Dan Jackson uh, taking over for Georgia in about 20 years as the head coach. He's, he's got that mentality. Aguero looked good, had four tackles, mm-hmm. two yeah. pass breakups for Aguero, uh, which he's going to be starting in, in that state – that secondary um, star. I would right? love this comment here from Missy uh, on Facebook that uh, Dumas Johnson knew he was going to be second string on yeah. this group. Absolutely. Yep, mm-hmm. Yeah. He knew mm-hmm. after he got hurt. I mean, it was, it was, it was obvious. It was, a, it was, was feeling last year. What was it? Who did, who did Tom Brady take over for Doug Flutie? Drew Bledsoe. Oh, that's a, Drew Bledsoe. Bledsoe. Same difference. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. He, it was he, a Drew yeah, Bledsoe. Let me ask oh, you man, I'm, I'm, bl- I'm blanking on the name. The, Yan- the, uh, who is it? Uh, so Lou Gehrig uh, took over for. I'm blanking. That's like the old, the old example of uh, well, whoever it was. Uh, yeah, I always think of Kirby Eddie help us taking out. over for Trent That's, Green. Yeah, because I was what ten at yeah. the time, right, Paul? <laughs> Jesus. Hey, I do want to ask y'all on that vein if JDJ. Wally does Pimp. Not, yes, there it is. Wally JD, Pimp. There it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. If JDJ does not get hurt, does he keep his starting position all year? Man, probably, mm, probably yeah, they, because because CJ just doesn't get the reps, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but then it it Last changes, year, but not into this year. Correct. I think, yeah, I think yeah. it changes this off season this, this yeah. year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because at that point, you risk like CJ going in the portal, and that's just a bad program. Right. But you're also, yeah, you get those bowl practices, you open things up a little bit, and you're just like, yeah. wait a minute. We yeah, got you, something here. Yeah. yeah, you you let CJ into the portal, or you let JDJ into the portal. You, you, they they made the right choice there. Yeah. Uh, Scott's watching from. Anybody want to take a guess at that city's made, name? In New made York? up, Paul. Come on, you know it's that made is up. definitely made up. Skin Skinnydellis Skinnydels. I don't know. Skinnydels. I like Skinnydels. Jason is a Yankee right. on here. He should know how to say that. Come on, bud. Half a, half a Yankee, I think. Wow. Yeah, Skinnydels, New York. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, yeah, guys, we've been going 48 minutes. We'll 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 do 10 more minutes. We'll get out of here. Where's the starting uh, secondary? Who are the five starting in the secondary? Starks. Wow. Okay, Starks. We that's the easiest one. Congrats, Dane. You got that Aguero. one. Okay, we've got two. Ellis Robinson. <laughs> Y'all doing Ellis? Yeah, Ellis Robinson. Well, I'm going Ellis. Okay. Yeah. It's got to be Everett, Everett then. Dalen yeah. Everett. Mm-hmm. And then Who's, I think it's it's probably Dan Jackson initially, but K.J. Bolden's coming. 
So Ooh. two. So so what we've so what uh, the the reason for that activity? We've got two true freshmen that we we think starting by the middle of the season. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, KJ, maybe not KJ even maybe the first quarter. Yeah. First quarter of the season. But I think I think Dane's right. The, the it, does it really matter? It's the it, they he rotates so many people in and out. So yeah. you know, Ellis Robinson may not start the game, but he's in on the third play, right? Something like that. I'm just throwing it out there. The, well, well, maybe, I know yeah. at star at star, and especially if they want to, if you know. They'll rotate those guys. If Dan yeah. Jackson is going to provide value, he loves Dan Jackson. So yeah, he they'll does. get some playing time So um, with Bolden your boy, there. Your boy Timmy might be onto something. I think this is who we see actually against Clemson. Like a realistic. Humphrey, Starks, Everett, yeah. Jackson, and Aguero is probably who we realistically see go out there. Now that's not – that is going to be who goes out there game one. That will not be who goes out there the final game of the season. Game I don't six, think. yeah. 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 Um, I mean, who's the last corner that's had the height that Ellis has had? I know Keely Ringo had some height. Keely did. Oh, Keely yeah. had a lot of hype when he came in, but he got injured, right? And so, yeah. I, Tyson Campbell had a good bit of hype yeah. following him from American Heritage. Did you say hype uh, or height? Hype. Hype. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Keely and Tyson probably would be the two that really stand out in my head as being those guys. Yeah. Evan Graham says Tyson. It's probably those two. And then Ellis. I don't know if either Dan, Dan Jackson really is the link between eras because he's the one that as Keeley takes the pick six back for a national championship, gets decleated at the two yard line. Yeah. <laughs> Dude's been, yeah. You turn on the, you turn on the, you know, 1980 championship game and, and he's out there as well. You know, it's just, he's, he's everywhere. He, he was leaping up on the sideline when, when Herschel's out there playing hurt. Right. Right. Uh, James Carraway says a new go dogs tweet tweet Kirby just dropped. Who did Georgia get? They got a kid from New Jersey and his Jersey. name, his name's tough. Uh, his last name is tough. It's Darren. I can a bog. I, I did not get that right. Um, that's my, this is not a city in New York. We think. Yeah. Uh, Three star edge. Darren yeah. I. Let's just do that. Darren I. Yeah, Darren I. Three-star edge kid from uh, Hillside, New Jersey, 6'5", 240. Uh, other sites have him rated a lot higher than, than Rivals does. I'm sure that uh, Rivals will probably uh, push him up as well. So well, there you I, go. Now it says one four-star. One says four, one says three, so whatever. Yeah, you know. yeah he's, he's, he's one of those kids, I think, that got discovered late, and so the recruiting services are uh, ticking him up I think he's all the way as high as 60 on one of them, and then all the way as low as a three-star on rivals. So 6'6", six, six, 250, he chose us over Ohio State and Notre Dame. Was he at the game? Does anybody know? I think he was. He I was. think. I could, be, I could be mistaken, though. I think he was. But that's – I'll put our there. panel as well because we have uh, videos from Sanford Stadium, Michael Williams, Ernest Green, Carson Beck. They're all up there. Kirby's post game will be up there as well. So uh, Jed May – Anthony Davis. <laughs> Sorry, that comment stopped me in my track. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. It was there? It was there with Dan Jackson. Was there with Tarkin as well? Now Guys, I want to go put Dan Jackson on, on one of the photos when they're playing on Hurdy Field back in the like late 1800s. Or whatever. <laughs> you should, yeah. You, you should do that and then put him on the boat with George Washington right behind him as well, so we can just see how far back we can push him. Don't mean do uh, I have to put Stetson out there too? Because that was I mean, he's the new Stetson is what he is. True, he is. He is. Uh, before we go, DS has asked us twice. Masters final predictions. Scotty Scheffler, baby. Scheffler's yeah, team. Scheffler. Uh, unless his wife has has the baby, and um, man, I just I just need Willie Z to get in that top twenty. Let's go. He's he's, he's gonna make tomorrow sweaty for me. Uh, you got anybody, Dane? I'm gonna go off the. Well, I mean, he's making a run now, but Ludwig Aber, next yeah, phenom of golf, and he's he's running good. With this. Okay. Yeah. First major, but he played in the Ryder Cup last year. So, I mean, for me, I, Cam Young, I love him, but he's like doing the he'll birdie and then he'll bogey and it just kind of evens out thing. Um, I, Max Holm, I'd love it if he won too. But yeah. Um, you I mean, got anybody he off here? And Alan Morikawa. Watch him. Ooh, he's on a little yeah. run today. Morikawa. Yeah. I love him. He's good. good. He was. He's really good. Guys, we appreciate you so much for stopping by. Thank you for the 20 bucks, Evan. We appreciate that as well. Uh, we'll be back with a overreaction show uh, four months from now. 
That'll be our Jeez. first overreaction show. We've got plenty, plenty of entertainment for you here on the UGA Sports YouTube page tomorrow night. We've got the All Things Georgia call in show with myself, Eddie from Ackworth, and Andy Stowe. Right after that, Dane and Brent will be taking over the channel doing a little bit of film. Don't lie, right? I don't know. It sounds up. I mean, Brent's, yeah. we weren't unified <laughs> in what we're doing, but we're doing something. And then, uh, if you haven't already, check out Jason's. Uh, he did a, an article today, right? Yeah, just uh, three plays that uh, other than Dom Lovett's touchdown. I had to add that at the headline at the end because that was easily the best play of the game. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, just three plays that, that stood out. And, and I wanted to pick ones that really weren't ones that top of mind, too, so that um, outside of Allen's interception. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, go check it out. UJSports.com. UJSports.com. And we'll see you uh, tomorrow night for some more live content. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. You guys are the best part of the show. Dane Young, Jason Butt, Eddie from Ackworth. We'll talk to you soon. I'm Paul Mary.